Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the meeting of the Capital Improvement Committee. Today is June 23rd, 2021, uh, and we're meeting in the Gala Room live um, at 6 p.m. So uh, welcome to all of you, for, and thank you for joining us. We have before us uh, requests from two departments. Uh, one is the DPW department, and the other one is from the school department on uh, several uh, items that they'd like to seek approval for use in their departments prior to the end of the fiscal year. Uh, due to some funding that they may have, may or may not have available to them, and we're going to have a conversation about that. And uh, first on that list is uh, some items that, that are coming from the DPW department. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask uh, uh, Chris to, to speak to both of his items. Sure. Um, so the first um, is the DPW feasibility study. This is something that has been on the capital list for two or three years. Um, the, the garage itself is close to 70 years old and has had seen very little work done to it um, and is the same size as it was when the DPW had a much smaller staff, um, you know, at that time 70 years ago. So we're looking for um, $50,000 to bring an engineering firm in who has public works experience designing these facilities, doing these studies. Um, they'll look at the number of uh, staff we have the mechanics that we have, the, the function that we use the, the space for, um, as well as how many staff members we have, um, you know, things like OSHA compliance, um, you know, safety, sta safety standards, make sure that we're in compliance with all those things. Um, so, it, you know, a few years ago when we, when we first started, the quote was, you know, roughly $33,000, $35,000. Um, <coughs> Things have escalated, <laughs> so yeah. we're closer to the forty-five to fifty thousand dollar mark now. Um, so I have that um, on here as a, as an item that's been an ongoing ask and has you know fallen down the list. Um, one of the things I I would like to point out, um, you know, I, I've said it before on other infrastructure work, whether it's streets and sidewalks and other things that you know I think we really need to take care of the facilities that we have in town before we add new infrastructure. Um, so Mark, Mark Craig did a fantastic job last night presenting the um, Senior Center Intergenerational Center that, that's being um, looked at, um, but I think we need, do need to take care of the infrastructure we have um, before we move forward with anything new. Okay. And um, the, night, the item is $50,000. Uh, is there any, uh, and would you want, you want you to describe both items and then, and then we'll talk about the financing of that. Sure. Um, the second item we have are the two-way radios that the DPW staff uses. Um, the radios we currently have are no longer being manufactured. We cannot find them, so we're not able to add to or replace any of the, the radios that we have. Um, these are things that we use um, throughout the year, in particular during storms, um, whether it's snow or, or hurricanes, wind, rain. Um, when you know having your cell phone in your hand is is not safe, um, you know you're soaking wet or you're covered in snow. Um, also, you're driving a truck when you're supposed to be hands-free. So, the two-way radio is, is is exempt from that hands-free law, and it really is something that we need to um, upgrade. So, working with Rob Verdone um, and Ken Fitzgerald, um, for Semrec and Fox Road Police Department, um, we have looked at using one of the bandwidths that. Um, one of the channels that already exists that is un unused um, through Semrec and Fox Road Police Department. Um, looking at the antenna, repeater, um, other infrastructure work that would need to be done up at Semrec, adding an antenna to the Semrec Tower um, is rough, approximately $50,000, and then you know having $25,000 to purchase new radios, also utilizing you know, 20 plus radios from, from the school department, from the buses um, that are no longer in use. We can reuse those within our own DPW trucks. So that'll, that'll let us use, cover all of the highway trucks, stream park equipment maintenance, as well as adding them to the water department. Because currently the water department has no radios um, in their system. So if cell service ever were to go down, you know, we're back in, in the dark ages. So um, okay. we're looking at $80,000 for a two-way radio system upgrade. Okay. All right. Um, your financing um, proposal. Uh, do, do you have you identified funds for this purchase? These purchases. Um, I have not. I I am looking at um, our operating budget 
um, year end savings. Um, we're looking at approximately $150,000 in our salary and line items that um, is going to be unused. Um, you know, that's that's really the only funding source within the DPW budget that would be available. Um, the other option would, would be, you know, looking at some of the infrastructure money, um, the American Recovery Act that's that's coming forward, which I know is still up in the air as far as what that's going to be used for. Um, but I think these these would both be worthy, if not from the salary budget at the end of year that, um, you know, for that infrastructure money. All right. So, um, so salary lines uh, probably couldn't be used for this type of purchase. But um, any thoughts on the ARP money, uh, Murray? Um, we're still awaiting guidance on. Um, we're still awaiting guidance on that. Um, every day they keep releasing more. Um, there's nothing specific yet on what other types of capital projects would apply. Okay. Um, Right now, it's just mainly water, sewer, and broadband. And it says there's a possibility you could use it for other capital projects. They just haven't released the guidance on that yet. Understood. So I can't say yes for sure. Fair enough. So, so it looks like there's money available within the budget, but not within the right line for him to do that. So I do think that um, I haven't, I mean, I'll, I'll defer to my colleagues on the, on the committee, but you know, I, I think the case has been made many times over for the, 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 the for the expenditures that he's asking. I, I think the money will probably fall to free cash at, at the end of the year. So that would be an item for us to consider in the fall of this year, um, because I do think um, once that happens. And now, it, it also comes to mind, too, that we could consider this as a possible expenditure through the AIP money, provided that there's agreement amongst you know the various boards and committees that that's a proper expenditure for those or for proper use of those funds. But I do think, um, and there's more to discuss about that because I'm not sure how you appropriate that. If that requires further, like a town meeting approval or anything like that, I'm not sure about that. But hopefully that's not the case. But um, but I don't, but want, we need to know if in fact they're eligible for expenditure anyways. So that's, that's rule number one before we can get to that point. So, and I'll defer to my colleagues on the committee. Uh, is there any thoughts about the about the requests themselves? I think, you know, having seen what goes on <clears throat> with uh, the department, a building that is as old as I am obviously has to, you know, base an upgrade and, you know, it would help with, I'm sure, the with the team that works down there to know that they're getting support from the community. Right. I agree. You know, to better improve their working conditions and their operation. And the two-way radio system is an absolute no-brainer mm -hmm. uh, that they can contact people in the trucks in case of you know community emergencies mm -hmm. and be able to deploy them to assist whenever we do have issues in the community, whether it's blizzards or hurricanes. Right. So I think it's really essential that the rolling stock for the highway department has that capability. Agreed. So I'm in favor of you know, both those studies. Okay. Just, just to make sure I understand it correctly, with what you have left over in salaries, if it's a transfer of line, and then you have that funding that could take care of this unless we find out through the guidance that it's a possibility to be able to fund this later on. Yeah, it, it, the way it works on the, on the town side of the budget is that um, if it was in the expense side, you'd be okay. But because it's in the salary line, you we can't, can't, we can't do that. Yeah, so uh, we, yeah. it'll fall to free cash at the end, and so it'll be clean to use it that way. But we have to wait till that happens before we can do that. So otherwise, so therefore, I think this would be something that we would probably carry over into the fall, maybe look to try and recommend it get it done then. Uh, unless, like I said, of course, if something comes up with the AIP money you know, in between, we might be able to do it sooner. So, so wouldn't you, I mean, you have the authority as a CIP committee to basically accept or agree to these items subject to funding. That's right. 
you're not you're not responsible for the funding side of it as no I, and I, I was going to get to that point so I, I do think that's a that's a valid point bill and I appreciate you saying that so so if the committee itself is supportive of these items then we can take a vote to support them and then subject to funding so I would um, so I would ask for a motion to that effect I'll make that motion. and uh, and George you're going to say something so, Chris so. I, I know the the the, the, the um, the water and the sewer are part of the DBW. Is there anything under that? Yeah, I mean, there is there is some expense funding left um, in water and sewer um, that could pick up, you know, their fair portion of the radio system. That's what I was thinking. Maybe you can cobble it together between yep. all three places, you know, yep. that might be enough for one of them at least so you don't have to wait until the fall. Mm -hmm. you know? So if, if there's a, uh, I think we would have to figure out the funding mechanism after this discussion yeah. tonight, but... But I would say, you know, if in fact, the, the, so there's a motion on the floor to, um, to uh, uh, recommend these items for, for funding. Um, do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Right. Okay, great. So let's move right to the school items. Um, and uh, I'll turn, I'll, I assume I'm gonna turn this over to Bill Yeah. Um, so I've given you all a handout that I tried to um, give as good a description as I can of, the, of what we're looking at. I'm gonna start it with where our funding source comes, so it just makes a little bit more sense to you why we're asking for this. Um, as you know, on our budget, obviously, we have uh, latitude between uh, expenses and salary um, to move money, but we are underspending our SPED um, tuitions, out of district tuitions, in transportation by over $600,000 due to the COVID and, and students not obviously going to these placements. We are underspending our salary lines significantly because again of COVID where we couldn't run any of our extracurriculums, we couldn't do a lot of the athletics, uh, we couldn't do tutoring, we couldn't do uh, numerous things that are in the salary lines to the tune of, of almost $700,000. So the, the reality here is we're going to prepay some of our um, tuitions for next year because we have a, an issue there with a very large move-in that's going to uh, cripple our budget if we don't. School committee approved that. Uh, that will use about 300,000. We're going to, and then we'd like to do some of these other items that we're, we're proposing here. Um, the, so from a funding point of view, um, right now I'm sitting, after the tuition prepayment, I'm sitting on almost a million dollars that, that uh, we aren't going to spend that will come back to the town. We, we talked about the chiller issue at the middle school uh, previously, and so I tried to kind of give you a description here, but we have tried to band-aid this system uh, since 2014 by replacing uh, compressors. There's two large chillers at the Hearn School, which are 2001 um, vintage uh, equipment. And the first one died uh, with one of the compressors out of the two going in 2014. We replaced it for $38,000. The second compressor in the second unit died um, in 2016. We, we replaced that for $42,000. The compressors only come with a one-year warranty, so unfortunately, you don't get a lot of life potential out of that if something goes wrong. And unfortunately, the 2014 one has already died. So what, what, that was a bad enough issue where we were running on one full, compress, one full chiller with half of the second chiller. The issue then happened is we just lost the second compressor on one of on the second uh, chiller. So we're down to one compressor running in each of these two chillers, which is barely enough to uh, maintain temperature within that building. The building was designed to have these chillers running. Um, it does not have a system that basically says you just open the windows and you're fine. Um, yeah. So this is definitely a problem. And as you know, we use that building for our summer school programs. Right. Um, so it's kind of critical that we have the ability to cool it. So right now I'm, I'm showing you basically what we think is our worst case numbers, which we hope will come down once we go to the actual final bid on it. But uh, to do an RFP, we need obviously to have a, an engineer design uh, how the system is going to be replaced, uh, one chiller, leaving the other chiller in place. Um, that's about 35,000. The chiller um, itself, equipment-wise, is about 145,000 and piping electrical materials and rigging would be another 55,000. So we're looking at a total cost of about 235 to replace a single chiller at that building. However, 
it is uh, based on the newer technology, uh, we would be looking at something that goes from having two compressors to having six, so you have a lot more life potential out of them. From four stages, which just means how hard they have to work to a 10 stage system, so they can be more variable, if you will, moving up and down, so the efficiency is tremendously higher. Um, and we would rely on this new chiller as the supportive one with the other one as the backup. Uh, we also think it's possible that the second, the, the one compressor that's working in the chiller that we would replace, um, that's still good, we would pull and hopefully be able to replace the compressor that's bad. It may not buy us a long time, but for a few dollars, we think we can get that and have two chillers op operational. Um, so that's, that's our first and, and really kind of our primary request because we really see this as a, a major issue for the town financially if we don't kind of get this one resolved soon. Mm -hmm. um, especially if we lose the other compressor. All right. Any questions from the committee? The oh, this is something you talked about actually during the during the March meeting, right? As a possibility. So, so this is nothing new that's come before the committee in that respect. No. And yeah. and we already are in conversations with Mass Save and the utility companies to get their rebates uh, in line. Um, obviously, anything we get in that rebate, we would turn back to the general fund. So, um, you know. It, or just reduce the overall cost, depending on how they actually do the rebate. Sometimes they make the, the, the payment go directly to the vendor, and you can mm -hmm. keep the cost down, and then therefore, whatever we didn't spend in the 235 would come back to the Yeah, to exactly the right. So. All right, musical instruments. This yeah. also has been on for the last three years. Um, we have whittled away a little bit of things when we had a little bit of extra money, but because of the items that I'm presenting tonight, which are on the back side of this, um, are much larger, uh, you know, a tuba at $9,500, um, and we need a couple of them. Um, the, the soprano sax, which is almost $6,000, uh, a barrel sax, which is almost $6,000, and then a uh, tenor sax at almost $3,000. Um, again, the entire thing was a three-year, what we presented was a three-year program to try to get the, this older equipment uh, upgraded for the, the music program. Um, what we're asking for is, is the original request for this year was 67509 We're asking if we could spend 33390 on these much larger items um, and get them off the uh, list at least at this point and try to chip away at some of the others as we have okay. funding available. All right. Questions from the committee? The only, only question I had is have you a, approached uh, the Music Moves You uh, cr group from the Bach? Bach Motors, he's uh, he Ernie Bach has a has a foundation mm -hmm. that actually provides instruments. I know that the you know I think Lowell High School was recently flooded, and he he offered to replace a lot of the equipment uh, that that was destroyed, so uh, through a grant. So you might want to think about that. Oh, we'll, we'll, there's a possibility. We'll definitely reach out to him. See yeah. if there's any option there. Yeah. So I just, uh, <clears> I just I heard said, that. I just happened to hear that the yeah. other day. So as I said, this is this is sixty-seven thousand times three that we're yeah. looking for. So if anything we can get from anywhere. We'll Understood. Be, be happy Understood. to accept it. Yep. And keep in mind, he was instrumental in getting the creature feature put back on, on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. So, I mean, he's got the dome to do it with. Or That's right. No, he definitely does. So. All right, Foxborough High School auditorium seating. Um, this, you know, the auditorium seating is from 1972, so it's 48 years old. Um, much of the fabric um, and the cushions themselves are, are pretty worn and, and, and you know, not in great shape. The, me the mechanisms for the, the seating are actually pretty good. It's amazing. There's, there's only a few that we would actually have to buy new springs and, and systems that way. But what we're presenting is basically we've been working with uh, Mass Core, which is part of the Mass Corrections. Uh, I think um, DPW yeah. uses them too. Yeah. And their pricing is phenomenally better than yeah, the private sector. Uh, I did uh, some quotes with a couple of the others, and this was, their pricing was about a third less. Um, than going to private sector. Plus, because of, of them being state, uh, you don't have to go out to bid um, and go through the process that way. So there's about 660 seats uh, in the auditorium. Um, there, the fabric side of the replacement with all new cushions, fireproof uh, fabric and, and cushion uh, systems is about 46,200. The um, removal painting, you know, sanding and painting of the Metal backs and seats is another 23,100 for a total of 69,300. Obviously, the schools use this auditorium significantly, yeah. but the town all is their major, um, yeah. you know, 
uh, place to come for meetings and stuff like that. So again, nearly 50 year old uh, seating uh, that I think has served the town well, but um, we've done a lot of work in this auditorium again over the years as we've had money to do it. We're new lighting, new, new carpeting, you know, redid the stage lighting, redid the stage, um, you know, flooring and stuff. So we've been trying to chip away at it, but this is kind of a little bit bigger uh, expenditure. So with the three of these together, we're basically looking at 337,691. Um, I think this, this seating one is a, really quite honestly uh, a good thing to, to get done for the town um, again as a major, as the only major auditorium that the, the district has as a availability. So, so just a, a point that I want to raise uh, because I think it's important for the, re the residents and who have been watching to, to hear this is that these items are things that are, that are clearly needed and need to be done and it's within your existing budget now. Um, if, the, if these were, were not approved, it would fall to free cash anyways, and we'd end up paying for them that way anyway. So mm -hmm. it's not like we're taking money from something that, and, that and we're reducing an, an account that is somewhere else. We're actually reducing, and you're still going to turn back five, six hundred thousand dollars at the end of the day. So, um, so that's for the benefit of anybody else who makes an request for so. So we're not like we're uh, treating this differently in many ways. We're, we're, it's actually the ability to do it now because you can do that with the ability of your budget to do that state on a state, state law basis. I think it's also important for the taxpayers to understand that what, a lot of the reason that we have the amount of money we have is that we used as much of the CARES Act money and right. grants that we could go after, the ESSA grants and all those, to basically not only cover the costs that are COVID related, but in any area that we could use the money that legitimately allowed us to, um, that would leave money in our budget so that right. it would come back to the town. Yep. Um, and we thought that was a more prudent thing in the end, that basically the town got the money back versus it having to be returned back to the state and, and not and, be used that and, way. And, and to your credit and to the, the district's credit, um, that's not always the case. I mean, where I've seen situations where a lot of money gets spent and, and not, nothing gets turned back to the yeah. town. And so I appreciate the due diligence, the management, the, uh, the, 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 the consideration of the taxpayers' dollars uh, in that regard that you did everything you could to try and minimize that impact and also turn back money at the end of the year. So appreciate that. So any, any uh, questions from the committee on the items? No, I think, um, you know, the, we've heard the musical instruments have been on the list, you know, for several years now, um, and they've been pushed down the line. Um, if there's funding left over, <clears throat> I think that's a good, a good way to start that replacement program. Um, the auditorium seating, you know, was not done when the high school was renovated. Um, Maybe it wasn't ready yet, but it's certainly no. Actually, ready now. that's a that's a good point, uh, Chris. I should have said that. the The reason the auditorium was not renovated at all during the high school thing was that the MSBA would not participate at all mm -hmm. in auditoriums. Um, they felt that that was not a school function as much as we use it, which is kind of funny. As much as every that, school uses That's the reason that, that it wasn't part of that program. It's wild, huh? Yeah. 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 So. Okay. All right. Uh, other questions? I think Amy, you, you know this probably as good as anybody. So. I do. Uh, Ed? Any questions? No? Good. All right, so I'll take a motion to approve the items, uh, uh, items the Hearn Medical School. Do we want to do it? We can do it as one, uh, one, uh, one motion, I think. All through, I'll do it. Probably ought to do them as three. Separately. Okay. Separate. All right, so a motion to, I need a motion to approve the Hearn Medical School, middle school chiller replacement. I'll make that motion to approve the Hearn Middle School chiller replacement for $235,000. We have a second. Second on that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, and then uh, a motion to approve the musical instruments for the Ahern Middle School, School Middle School Music Program as described. I'll make a motion to approve the musical instruments for the Ahern and High School Music Programs in the amount of 33391 I have a second. Second on that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And finally, uh, the Foxborough High School Auditorium seating. Do I have a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion to replace the Foxborough High School Auditorium seating as described in the amount of 69300 All right, I have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. All right, any further uh, business before the, the Capital Improvement Committee at this time? All right, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All right.
All in favor, say aye. 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 The meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.